Robin Horn. I grew up in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and uh, my dad sold shoes, and my mother was a homemaker, and she was an artist. She had gotten an art degree from the University of Tulsa, and uh, my sister is a painter, so there are three artists in the family, which is kind of nice. And uh, I didn't take a lot of art classes in high school. I was more into music and got to college and went to Hendrix in Conway and decided majoring in art was probably the easiest way to graduate, so I majored in art. I've been working with wood about half of my life now. It's um, totally the opposite of pottery where you're building up instead of taking away. I started working in 84. At that point I started making geodes and did a lot of different variations on, on the theme. Moved from that to making millstones, uh, something else that was round. And uh, that's been a series that I have revisited a lot. It seems as though there are a lot of variations on the millstone that I've been able to make that I really like. So I go back to that on a regular basis. And that's the only shape anymore that I use the lathe on. So I've, I got tired of round things and moved on to carving. When you think about all the woods there are in the world, they're just uh, an enormous amount of them and they're all really individual and pretty interesting. There are a lot of woods that I really like. Uh, Australia has some incredible uh, woods, jar burl and coolie burl. They're just beautiful to start with. And you have to kind of guard against finding a piece of wood that is so beautiful you can't figure out what to do with it. A lot of pieces of wood have different quirks or uh, characteristics that uh, you might want to take advantage of that you hadn't thought of before. And so you have to be open to what the wood presents to you because it can offer opportunities that you wouldn't necessarily have thought of yourself. So it's really a collaboration with the material and um, I think that's another thing that attracts me to it so much. The series that I have worked in all seem to be, for some reason, stone-related shapes that stones come in. I started with the geode series and the millstone series. I did a standing stone series, which uh, relates to st stone circles, a stone hinge kind of approach. And then the latest series that I started doing was a slipping stone series. I like to make the slipping stones look like they're about to collapse. So the more they're looking precarious, the more interesting they are, as opposed to just a stack of stones, it looks like something that's getting ready to topple. And, and that gives it some tension and makes it more interesting. The Slipping Stone series particularly um, has been uh, one that I have used this concept of carving things that look assembled when they are in fact solid. I usually have a concept of what I want to do. Um, I find a piece of wood that has the dimensions to do that, and then I start drawing on the wood with a piece of chalk, trying to figure out how the components of a slipping stone are going to fit together and how they're going to work as a whole, and making it look precarious and trying to get the movement in it. And uh, a lot of times it'll go through four or five renditions before you find one that you feel like is, is the right one to use and then I cut them on the bandsaw um, if they're small enough to fit into it. Uh, if it's a very large piece, I, I carve it with a chainsaw, which is a little more challenging. I had some problems with my back and I ran into Sandy Sell, who's a student at UALR at the time, and uh, she's been doing some chainsaw work with me. It's really been helpful to get her input on doing a large chainsaw piece. Actually just having two people to do it helps because 
if you have one stand in the back and one in the front, you can, it's hard to tell where the back side of your blade is going, how far down you're going, and uh, you know, determining ex exactly how you need to uh, make the cut. And so it's been really helpful to have her working with me on some of the larger pieces. When we met, we immediately could communicate pretty well with each other about ideas of, of art. And I, uh, I kind of kiddingly, as I was leaving after that visit and, and mentioned that, you know, anytime she wanted some help with something to let me know. And she asked me, did I run a chainsaw? And I said, only since the age of 10. So that opened up a, a thought. And when she decided she wanted some uh, assistance in actually wielding the chainsaw, she gave me a call and it has, has worked out. I mean, they're completely her idea, her designs, her work. I'm just assisting with the, with the tools. I had never worked in the subtractive process until I met her. Just being exposed to that the subtractive process has t totally changed the way I view um, my capabilities and my understandings of developing my designs. When I work with her, she helps me to see things a little bit more simplified than my brain develops them. So um, coming up with the idea, she has started to uh, help me see how to simplify the designs. Sandy and I working together has, has been uh, successful because we think so much alike and we're really willing to um, discuss what needs to be done. And we started out with me saying, here's the cut, marking the cut, and she makes the cut. Uh, but then we did a piece that was a collaborative piece where we discussed the design and went back and forth with, des with the design, deciding what to do as far as the, the texturing and the final form of the piece should be. Uh, so it's, it's really rare that I do that. <clears throat> it seems like I work better in my studio by myself. Teaching is not something I'm interested in. When my back first started hurting, I got into painting because it's lighter weight and I really struggled with color and felt like that uh, it was just something that I needed to explore and pursue. And I have really gotten to where I enjoy the painting almost as much as working in wood. It's, it's mostly acrylic work that I'm doing, a lot of mixed media type of stuff. And uh, I just feel like that it's uh, helped my wood career and it's helped my design sense. Uh, it's interesting that the exploration process going through the painting has gone much faster than the process of going through designing the wood. And it's probably because I had developed an aesthetic having studied different people's artwork uh, while I was working on the wood that I had a little more to go on and a little more to start with when I started the painting. It's part of the process to have someone at the end want to purchase your work and live with it. It's uh, inspirational to live with art, and I've been very fortunate to be able to do that. It's my contention that every artist would be a major collector if they could afford to. And John and I have been fortunate to be able to buy other people's work and surround ourselves in our home with their work. Our collection really responds to that view, and um, so my work is a reflection to a certain degree of the collection, and the collection ends up being an inspiration for my work. I'm not real sure why artists uh, determine that this process or that process is the best one for them. Um, it just feels right. But the processes that I use on the carving are, are something that uh, I really enjoy, so I just keep doing them.